part of the problem is when you look at it, um, it says show that there's a point <coughs> x, y, where x is not zero. So make the transition. This x and this y, they're constants. Okay, they're constants. It can be hit by firing at two different angles, theta one and theta two. So what's the situation? You've got something like this, right? And they're picturing some point in the air, for instance. Because it can be anywhere. It doesn't, doesn't have to be on the ground, okay? And what you should be able to do is hit it from two different ways, right? You should be able to hit it high up, and you should be able to hit it from low down as well. So you've got a theta one and a theta two, okay? Now, actually drawing that, like, that doesn't really establish anything that's going to help you solve the question necessarily. Like, this isn't going to get you any marks. But you've got to have a clear sense in your mind of what am I trying to work out here, okay? Because that's the difference between, okay, I read this answer now and it makes sense to me versus I can think of this answer myself because I understand what's going on, okay? All right, so remember I was trying to alert you to the fact that this is a quadratic and it's a quadratic in tan theta. So let's try and make that a little more obvious because it's sort of in a mishmash weird form. It's in a, it's in a form to make this equation a path obvious but it's not in a form that we can work with it as a quadratic in tan theta. Okay? So let's put it into general form, and tan theta is kind of like our, our x squared, if you like, because we're used to seeing this kind of thing, right? Yes? So instead, I want to put it into this form, okay? where these are my, that's what makes my quadratic. Okay? So to do that, I'm going to have to expand out um, so I can get this tan squared on its own. So I'm going to have this, Minus 1 on 4h. Now, I should have stopped. Um, these two here, when I start working with this point, okay, they're now constants. They're not variables anymore. So, I don't know if your if you're capital Y's and your um, capital X's look very different, okay? But let's make that transition because um, what you look at in part 2 doesn't have any lowercase X's or Y's in it. They're not, they're not variables anymore. So, what have I got? That's a capital X squared. Now, I've got one of them, and then I've got another one. But this has the tan squared on it. Okay? Now, uh, I'm going to skip a few lines um, because I'm running out of space. But after you rearrange all of this, if I want to get it looking like this, here's what it's going to look like. Um, you're going to get this y and this 1 on 4 h x squared. They're going to be together because they're completely constant terms. Y is constant. Capital Y is constant. Capital X is constant. H is constant, right? So they're going to be, that's going to be my C, okay? Over here on the end. So if I have, let's see, um, how will I write this? I'm going to have this guy on the front. Then I'm going to have this one. And then I'm going to have, what have I got? These both become positive, I think. That's all we can do. And this looks like a disaster. It looks like a mess. But all I'm trying to do is put it in a form that's easier to work with. It's going to lead to my inequality. Okay? All right. Now, I'm going to just put some colors on it so you can see what's going on. That, that's A. That is B. And that is C. Is that okay? Not so at me if you can see where I'm going. Okay, good. Now that I've got it in general form, I can now move toward this inequality that they've got. Okay? What does the inequality mean? It says, show that the point, um, x, y, can be hit by firing at two different angles. Okay. Now, the angles are theta 1 and theta 2. I've drawn them up here. Okay. Now, what that means is this equation here has two solutions okay? corresponding to theta 1 and theta 2. But don't forget, this isn't a quadratic in theta, is it? There's no theta squareds in here. There's tan squareds, okay? So one of my solutions will be, um, I'll do it like this. One of my solutions will be tan theta one, and the other one will be tan theta two, okay? Does that make sense? Just keep that in your head for part three, okay? Now, if I know that there are two solutions, and the two solutions are different, okay? If I'm gonna have two different, or a better way to say it is two distinct solutions, for a quadratic, what does that tell me about the quadratic? It's the discriminant, right? Okay, now do you see why you're like people, you have to make the leap from projectile motion to quadratics, okay? And that's a hard leap to make. Yeah? Yeah? No, I thought x, y. 
Because if you want two solutions, mm -hmm. like solutions or the roots. Well, yeah, roots is a tricky word to use because it's kind of like it, it implies you know collision with the axis. But um, it, they are kind of roots, so right? You can use Discriminants will always work, and what you've got is in the form of a quadratic. Any kind of quadratic, <laughs> okay? And this is a weird quadratic, I admit, but it's still a quadratic with two solutions. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's a little bit like those circle questions. Do you remember from, like, say, year 10 kind of era, and they're like, look, you've got, a, um, you've got a circle, and there's a tangent, or something like that, okay? Now, again, because the equation of a circle is, has um, squares in it, right? And the equation for that straight line is going to be linear. When you solve them together, you get a quadratic. Okay? Now, if there's a tangent, what do you know? One solution, that means the discriminant will be equal to zero. right? So that's how you can use discriminant in questions where it doesn't seem like it's about like quadratic theory. What's that about? All these random numbers. But here, it's a physical situation. Okay? So I'm going to say, for two distinct solutions, um, the discriminant should be greater than zero. Okay, and this is sort of your bridge to get to the inequality which we're going to land on in the question. Okay, so what is the discriminant? It's b squared. Oh, sorry, close the bracket. Minus four a. What's that? That's a, and this is c. That's greater than zero. Okay, now I know that looks like a terrible mess. Okay, but they give you some clues in the question. Because remember, they actually tell you what you're required to prove. You want to get to here. Um, x squared is less than this. Okay. Um, we've, we've done the hard part of the question. The hard part of the question was putting it in this form and then landing on this inequality. The rest of it is just algebra. It's just algebra. Okay. Now, quick question. Do you want me to show you the algebra? Or are you fine? Do you think you could get there? Raise your hand if you want me to show you the algebra. Anyone? Okay, I'm going to give you my page. You can have a look at it. Um, it really is not that hard. Um, when you think about what you've got here and the fact that there's an extra 4h, right? essentially what you're doing is multiplying through by 4h twice. Okay, Doing it once gets rid of this one, and then doing it again gets rid of this one. And that's why your extra 4h lands on here. Okay, So that's why there's a 4h, h minus 1. Okay? But it's, yeah, it's, you just got to be tidy with your algebra and make sure. I mean, it's, you kind of have this advantage of knowing <coughs> what the condition will be at the end. So if you screw up, just backtrack. And be, be slow. Don't do lots of steps at once. Okay? But that's where you land. Now, 